Jeremiah chapter 42. Then all the captains of the forces, and Jehanan, the son of Kariah, Korea, whatever the guy's name is. Now we're just picking up from 40, 41, 42. Now this Jehanan, this is the one that went up to uh, Gedaliah and said, Ishmael's going to kill you. And by Gedaliah, this man couldn't be trusted. Ishmael does. He kills Gedaliah. Now Jehanan sets up an army to go after Ishmael. Ishmael gets away. And Jehazaniah, the son of Hoshaniah, and all the people from the least, even unto the greatest, came near. And said unto Jeremiah the prophet. Right now, these guys, they come to Jeremiah. I don't really see where these, what these guys really mean. Where they really stand. And they're going to sound like they stand up good. But in the end, it's going to be a fall. Lee, let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thy eyes do behold us. You know, it looks like it's pretty good. Jeremiah, you're a prophet of the Lord. You're right. Uh, pray to God for guidance for us. That the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. Guidance. Where we're gonna go? How are we gonna do it? We want God. Why don't they pray to God? Why did they come to Jeremiah? Why did they tell Jeremiah you pray? It said, "Let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto Lord thy God." They're not praying. They want somebody else to pray for them. I mean, have you, you know, there are preachers and all that. They get they get invited before the city council meeting or whatever city meeting, whatever kind. Of, can we have this preacher come in and pray for us for the opening of the sun? Why don't you pray? Why can't you pray? Something wrong with your prayer life? Something you don't believe that God maybe not hear you? That the Lord our God God may show us the way wherein we may walk. And the thing that we may do. Sounds good. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto him, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your word. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord has answered you, I will declare it unto you, and I will keep nothing back from you. That's a prophet, prophet of the Lord. He's going to speak every word according to what God has said. But Jeremiah is going to go off, he's going to go to God, and he's going to beseech the Lord for guidance for these people. They should be praying too, but it's nowhere recorded that they pray. Jeremiah is faithful, whether good or bad, whether evil or, or wickedness or whatever it be. What God tells me, I'm going to tell you. And through 41 chapters, we have found Jeremiah to be that faithful and true to the word of God. Then said Jeremiah, The Lord be true and faithful witness between us, if we do not, even according to all the things of which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil. But Jeremiah says that because guess what? There's only been two options up to now. To either stay in the land, sword, pestilence, or famine, or go to Babylon and live. And many of the Jews did not like the Babylon equation. They fought hard against God telling Jeremiah, go to Babylon, turn yourself over to the enemy. What would be good is what God says. What would be evil is what man thinks. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God to do whom we shall send thee, that it may be well with us, when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Sounds good. I mean, whatever God tells us, if it's good or bad, we're going to do it. Sounds so good. And if you if you fall for that, you haven't witnessed the people many years. You haven't dealt with people in the ministry. You haven't been part of any kind of ministry of the Lord whatsoever. If somebody came up to you and said, yeah, I'm saved, you would set them for face value and let them go off into hell. 
You would not say, well, tell me how you got saved and to hear their story. You won't even challenge them, even after you hear the story, to make sure it's true. These guys know how to speak, but they don't know how to live. Now, had we just closed off with the paragraph Mark and 7, and that's it, you would think, wow, hunky dory, these guys are so excellent, we're going to see them in heaven. Really? If you've got to put people to the test, you've got to put them to the challenge. The Bible says we're not to judge their salvation, but James says they're fruit. Now, you don't go to church. You don't read your Bible. You don't witness to people. You don't do nothing for the Lord, and you say you're a Christian. I'm going to doubt you. Judge not, you should be judged. I have the Bible. The Bible says I'm not to judge you. I'm to judge things. And when I see the things in your life doesn't match by a Bible living, I have perfectly good right to say, I don't believe you, by your works, by your testimony, by the thing. These men are going to be tested. We're going to find what they, who, and what they really are. You take it from face value right now, they look so great and pious. And it came to pass after ten days that the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Now why the wait? Sometimes God will take time to answer your prayer. This is recorded 10 days. Jeremiah didn't walk in a prayer closet and God said, okay, here's the prayer. Here's an answer. He did, 10 days later. Then called he Jehanan, the son of Kerah, whatever his father's name is, and all the captains of the forces which were with him. Jeremiah is facing an army. He's not facing a king. He's faced with an armed military strength men that can tear him to pieces and yet he's going to speak what God tells him to speak I think back in Jeremiah chapter 1 we find God's testimony to Jeremiah let me turn there real quick he says it's not chapter 1 be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee um, another place I think he said you know, make your forehead whatever it is but don't be afraid of him Jeremiah is not afraid of him and said unto them thus saith the Lord the God of Israel unto whom ye sent me to present your supplications before him okay here's the answer to prayer if ye will still bide in this land it sounds good doesn't it Stay in Israel, in Judah. Then will I build you. That sounds great, doesn't it? That's what they wanted. Don't you hear glory, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, raise your hands. He tells us to stay in the land. You, Oh, these guys are just going to be so happy as punch. And not pull you down. I'm not going to destroy you. The city's already destroyed. I will plant you as a vineyard and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. God's sorry for what he did to Jerusalem. He's looking at that mess right now. Everything burnt up. Everybody is in captivity or dead. And God says, no. and you did it. It is a result of your sin, but I am sorry I had to do that. And most loving parents, when they discipline their children, this is going to hurt me more than hurt you. That's a true statement. A loving parent really loves their children. They don't want to discipline them. And pretty much they feel sorry, but they love them that they need to be corrected. And here's the Holy Father, the Heavenly Father, saying to his son, I didn't want to do that, but I had to. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon. Babylon is still in the rulership. Babylon is still the government. That is the kinker. That is the monkey wrench thrown into the gears. Now we don't want Babylon. We want our own king. God already told you, Jeremiah, you ain't going to get one. I believe it was chapter 25. I think that was. Of whom you are afraid. See? 
God knows who you're afraid of. God knows your fears. They fear the king of Babylon. Why? Because Ishmael just killed Gedaliah. The, it had to be the friend of Nebuchadnezzar. Because Nebuchadnezzar put this guy in the authority. They're afraid of retaliation of the Babylonian government to kill all that killed his friend. I'm assuming they were friends. Be not afraid of him. That, uh, Nebuchadnezzar saith, Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. Look at, wouldn't you love that message? And I will show mercies unto you. Wouldn't you love it? That he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. Now Cyrus lets this happen. And Ezra and Nehemiah. That's the positive. You would think they would jump on that. You wouldn't think there'd be a verse 13, another paragraph. God's still speaking. Doesn't God know everything that we, we're going to do? Doesn't he have foreknowledge? Yet, the free will that he gives men, he does say verse 13. And yet, he knows what they're going to do. Don't give me Calvinism. God would rather have them do verse 10 to 12 without verse 13 and 14. He already knows what they're going to choose, but he gives the two points. He gives the positive and he gives the negative. But if ye say, we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord our God. Now remember they said, verse 5, The Lord be true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all the things which the Lord thy God will send thee to us. Whether it be good, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God. And God says in verse 13, if you don't listen to me. This is a warning. This is a double warning. Remember what you told Jeremiah 10 days ago. You opened your big fat mouth in the foxhole. Lord, if you get me out of this, I will such, 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 such. You're falling off the roof and, and you're about to crash to, to the to the ground, maybe pain, maybe death. Oh Lord, 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 if you save me, if you do, Lord, out, out, out. You open your big fat mouth. Saying no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. That's exactly where God told them never to go. Where we shall see no war, peace. Nor hear the sound of the trumpet, war, troops coming, nor have hunger of bread. That's exactly what's been going on in the city. There we will dwell. Two options, stay in the land or go to Egypt. They said whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice. Of God said, okay, fine. You should have just said good. But you have to go evil. So I'm going to say good and evil in the exact order they give it. They are so afraid of the king of Babylon that they're going to forsake their land and go where God told them not ever to go. And now therefore hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If ye wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, Sojourn is a temporary dwelling. You don't bring a U-Haul when you sojourn. You bring luggage. Because you're not going to stay there. But we're going to go down to Egypt for a little while. And once it all blows over, we'll come back. Then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared. There you go. You feared the king and you feared the sword shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. And the famine, there's the famine, whereof we, ye were afraid, ye shall follow close after you. Uh, and the famine wherein you were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. You know what they're going to do? They're, they're going to bring more plagues upon Egypt by disobeying God. 
the Egyptians are going to suffer because of these guys. You know, if I was Egypt, I'd never let any of the Jews back. After all the mess that happened in the book of Exodus, I'd put a sign at every uh, road that leads into Egypt and every path. No Jews allowed beyond this point. And if you do cross this line, we're going to handcuff you, we're going to bound you, and we will bring you to your king in Babylon and let him deal with you, but you are not allowed in our land no more. Here's the book of Exodus to tell you why. But money, the love of money, you can buy our horses, you can buy our women, you can buy everything we got. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, war, by famine, and by pestilence. And none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. So all these men that come to Jeremiah, they're going to die. And they're not going to come out of it. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, at my anger, as my anger and my fury has been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you, when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. You would think that Jerusalem is smoking. It is destroyed. It, is, it has been totally annihilated by the army. People are dead in the streets. They have been taken to Babylon. There has just been tragic after tragic. Jeremiah writes lamentations. And you would think, after all that, we're going to do what God says to do. Wrong. God just told these guys exactly what just happened. Look around. Look around the city of Jerusalem. You go to Egypt, this is exactly what's going to happen to you. The same sword, the same pestilence, the same famine. It'll just move with you. You cannot run away from your problems. You cannot move away from your problems. They're going to follow you right behind you. Even if you don't have a U-Haul, your problems will be in that U-Haul that you do not see to be following you. You better believe that. And then you'll have more problems. The Lord has said concerning you, O ye Raymond of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. Deuteronomy 17, 16. Know certainly that I have not, I have admonished you this day. I have declared, I have pronounced, I have forewarned you, I have told you, I am warning you, I am giving you what God has told me to tell you. There are things that are going to happen if you go there. Don't go. For ye disassembled in your hearts. When ye sent me into the Lord your God, look at this. You didn't come to me with a pure heart. But I went to the Lord with a pure heart. When ye sent me unto the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us unto the Lord your God. Now our God, excuse me, Lord our God. Jeremiah is, is quoting back to what they said. Jeremiah is going to remind them the words that they said. They said, then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be true and faithful witness between us. If we do not, even according to all things, for which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we will send thee, that it may be well with us. When we obey the voice of the Lord our God, they made an oath, to God to obey and they're not going to and Jeremiah knows it and he's going to give them a warning outside of God's warning that is why we go to doors that is why we preach on the street that is why we give out gospel tracts. that's why we open the Bible with people to tell them that listen there is judgment coming this is the way out God has told you in his book we are telling you with our voice And now I have this day declared it to you.
but ye have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. Jeremiah said, you're not listening. And I know you're not going to do it. But obey the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for the which he has sent me unto you. Uh, I thought it said in verse 6, whether it be good, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to do to, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the, I didn't say that sounds so great, that sounds so pious. And yet, in their heart, they were not going to do what God wanted them to do. And Jeremiah knew it before they even had. We're, we're not going to pick up the next chapter. Lord willing, that'd be a couple days. But I'll tell you what happened now in case the Lord comes for us. They're not going to obey the Lord. And there are people you're witnessing to, and if you don't dig down deep and you don't deal with them, you might send them off thinking they're saved and they're not. You have done the worst evil. Jeremiah looked him in the face and maybe pointed his finger in their face and said, Listen, you are not doing what God told you to do. And you're going to face judgment unless you repent. It's not love. Judge not. Jeremiah is doing it. And God approved. Jeremiah opened up the Bible that God gave him to speak. It's an oral Bible. Spoke to him exactly what the words are. Looked him in the face and said, if you don't obey God, your goose is cooked. Now therefore know certainly that ye shall die by, sword, by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence, in the place whither ye desire to go. Oh! They wanted to go to Egypt before they went to God. They just wanted Jeremiah to get a hallway pass from God to do what they wanted to do. Even though the law said in Deuteronomy 17, you are not to go to Egypt. They asked Jeremiah to get permission from God to do something that violated the law. And people do it every day, especially Sundays in churches. They want that man to get up in the pulpit and make them feel good and tickle their ears, the Bible says, so they can keep on living the sins they're living with and feel so good. And Jeremiah steps in that pulpit and says, you're guilty, you're sinners, and you're going to die unless you get right. Jeremiah walks away, and the preacher gets up, and the next thing, I am so sorry for having that guy come to our church. He says so much for, you know, in the original Greek and the Hebrew, it says this and that. And you forget that the Bible, come over here and turn over. First John says that God is love. God really didn't say that. Jeremiah didn't understand that the Babylonians should talk of the people in the land thereof. And got it quite confused, because, you know, he spent all that time in jail and didn't have enough clue, and then this is delirious and all that. You wait to see what happens in the next chapter. You know, God said, let me read. Um, where is it? The end of verse 18. And it occurs in a reproach, ye shall see this place no more. Now, this is going to answer a question in chapter 43, where we'll deal with later, Lord willing. But let's finish this chapter. By pestilence in the place where ye desire to go and to sojourn. You wanted to go there. I knew you wanted to go there. That's what God told me to do. I still prayed for you. I still gave you the... Listen, there are people out there, they don't care about going to heaven. But we still tell them the word. We still tell them what God told us to tell them to say. We still put it in their face. And they're not going to do They don't want to do They don't want to have anything to do with it. But it's our job to tell them. It is not our job to get them saved. It's not Jeremiah's job to tie them up and handcuff them, to chain them to the post of Jerusalem and say, you must stay. Jeremiah's job is to tell them what the word said and it's up to them. That is our job today. We're told to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. We're not told to go ye in all the world and get them saved. That's God's job. 
We're to do a Jeremiah in chapter 42. We're to preach the word. Now what they do with it, that's between them and God. Jeremiah is found faithful in chapter 42. Jeremiah has done his job. God is pleased with Jeremiah. Now the rest of the idiots, that's their problem. And when they die and stand at the great white throne judgment, and, why, uh, and Jesus will say, Depart from me, I never knew you. But didn't we try to go out to Ishmael? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, Lord, we never knew. I had no idea. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, you want to grab your book real quick? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you want to open up to chapter 42? There's chapter markings in the Bible. And have, yes, Lord. All right, you want to read chapter 42 to these idiots? And tell them they knew exactly what they were doing. And they still did what they were not supposed to do. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. My prophet was found faithful. You guys weren't. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The, the, the lake of fire or the, however the Lord says it. Before God does anything to your life, he's going to show you the judgment and he's going to warn you of the judgment and he's going to give you opportunity to flee the judgment that is coming by repenting and getting right these guys should have stayed in, in Jerusalem they should have stayed in Judea and they should have continued to seek Lord okay we're going to stay what do we do but it never gets that far and wait till we pick up chapter 43 in our next lesson well, I tell you it gets really 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 good